What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Loading Podcast. My name is Arthur. And my name is AJ. Today is January 22nd, 2021. Uh, Arthur, how are you doing today, my guy? Yo, I am doing pretty good. Uh, today has been a very good day, and this week of mine has actually been uh, very good. Uh, America, we finally have a new person in, up in the White House. Trump is officially gone, and we have in his replacement, as a wise man uh, once said that I know, uh, Papu Biden, or Theo Biden, excuse me. He says Theo Biden now instead of Papu. So uh, oh shout goodness. if you're listening to this, shout outs to you, bro. Um, other than that, um, I'm doing pretty good, bro. Like, it's been a very good week so far. Yeah, 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 definitely for sure. Uh, definitely, that's that's uh, that's why we just started podcast immediate <laughs> immediate politics. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm doing good as well. I'm glad to know that you're doing good. Uh, real quick, before we even get into this episode. Just make sure you're aware that this is a gaming podcast, and also make sure if you listen to this, that you can listen to it on any platform that you can listen to podcasts. If you're watching a video version at Aaron Ryder on my YouTube channel, which you should be doing, wink wink, uh, you could also li- listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts, expe- except SoundCloud. We don't fuck with SoundCloud over here. We, we, we but, uh, <laughs> used to, but not anymore. Yeah, yeah, no. But uh, uh, basically, yeah, you can listen to it anywhere you listen to podcasts. And also, if you are a recurring listener, make sure you go ahead and rate us five stars on iTunes because we do appreciate that. Uh, anyways, yeah, Arthur, you're doing good. I'm doing good. What do you, what do you say we just skip all the small talk? Let's just go right into the fucking uh, our, our weekly segment. You know ooh, what I mean? Look you know at you. Vibes? Look at you just jump into the news. God damn. Ooh. Are you a news mm-hmm. anchor now? You're like, oh, we only got a limited amount of time. Let's just get straight to the news. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm with it. Yeah. You, right, are you with yeah, it? Yeah, I'm with it. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. So let me introduce this segment to you. Uh, this is called Loading Complete or Stuck on Loading. If you're not aware what this means, let me break it down for you now. Now, Loading com- well, basically what this is is a weekly segment where we look at one piece of news that is that has been good and one piece of news that has been bad and we basically equate this to gamer terms basically saying like, yo, their loading screen is complete or their loading screen is stuck on loading their, their, their console crashed, blue screen of death, etc. You get, you get what I'm saying? You're stuck on loading, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, basically, let's just jump right into it. All right, so should we start with the good news or should we start with the bad news? Let's start news? with the good know. news because our bad news is, um, let's just say, <laughs> very bad. Oh, my yeah. Lord. We'll get to that. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, let's just go ahead and start with the Actually, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we start, how about this, right? Because we already, every, people who listen to this podcast already knows um, your stance on our stuck on loading. So let me take care of loading complete real quick. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. So <clears throat> for this week on loading complete, we have rumors slash leaks for GTA 6. We currently have rumors saying that the up and coming GTA 6 is going to be starring a female protagonist, which will be a first for the series, which is going to be very interesting to see. And these rumors are also supported with a new patent that take two has filed for this new advanced ai driving thing essentially like it's going to improve how ai functions when driving like taking different routes when there's traffic reacting more um realistically to things that happen on the streets whether that's caused by you or the environment around you providing like a nice more immersive experience and just this alone, like, you already know how Rockstar does it. They always try to one-up themselves in terms of, like, what they do with their games. So, you know, I'm personally looking forward to it. What do you think, AJ? Mm-hmm. What do you think about all this? Uh, I, I think this is great. I think that uh, not not the not the advanced NPC AI, because honestly, who, who really cares? I don't, I don't really play GTA for the fucking advanced AI. Mm-hmm. I, I, I play GTA to, uh, to just get on the game and just shoot stuff up. And uh, have some fun, you know what I mean? But uh, the reason why I say this is uh, great and worthy of being on load and complete is because that at least the rumors are finally starting up again, you know what I mean? There's, there's actually hope that we will see a GTA game this decade. Uh, yes. Yeah, the reason I say that is because GTA 5, uh, it's 2021 now. GTA 5 is supposed to be eight, turning 8 years old, I believe, right? Yeah, 8 years, eight old, years old in year. September. Yep, so... Uh, yeah, this is uh this is good because uh Rockstar I don't know, man. I I I don't know when they started working on GTA 6, but this has just been 
dead for the longest time. And just to see that it's getting picked back up again is kind of cool, you know what I mean? Because I know Rockstar is one of the last uh, horizons when it comes to game developers and uh, polishing games and releasing games when they're ready, you know what I mean? They, they really... I don't think I've ever seen them put out a lackluster product. They have been tried and true this whole time. And like some other companies, <coughs> CD Projekt Red. Uh, I knew that was coming. Yeah. I knew that was yeah, coming. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> for real. So so you know they're going to be delivering a quality product. At least I, 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 I hope so. Insert Kodak Black meme. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, I hope this is, uh, is going to be coming sometime soon. Uh, you definitely know this is going to be exclusive to the consoles. Of course, because uh, so, you already know if it, it's going to be exclusive to the consoles and then the PC version will come like, what, two years down the line? Mm-hmm. But yeah, just just the fact that the rumors are starting to turn up again just means that hopefully something is coming soon within the coming uh, months or year or so. So, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see right, what happens with that. That's, now, that's moving on to uh, <laughs> stuck on loading. AJ, I'm going to just let you take the reins on this one, bro. And All everyone, right, so- you will see why. <laughs> All right, so so on the day that we're recording this, there has been an uprising, a storm, if I may, <laughs> on Twitter about Microsoft. Everyone has just been going at Microsoft, bro. Everyone's flaming Microsoft. And to to be honest, let me let me even give you some context on this myself. If you listen to the last episode of the podcast, we you would know that we like like sometimes we don't like to. Cause we don't. This is not fun for us, but we hag on Microsoft a lot, even though it's well deserved. But we hag on them a lot, uh, just just because they be doing um, uh, stupid shit. They got no games, X Y Z, whatever. To the point where it's like I'm actually considering making a full on video essay analysis on this uh, subject. But uh, basically, what's going on right now? Uh, Twitter's in a storm right now because apparently. <laughs> The Microsoft, the Microsoft uh, Xbox Live prices are increasing again. This is not the first time. I don't even think this is the second time. They're increasing again. And basically, let me break down the prices for you, right? It is uh, three months for $30 and six months for $60. Oh, damn. That nigga's tripping. Let that sink in. Try it. Do you, do you have any Arthur? Do you have any takes on this? I I don't even want to. Well, here's the thing. I don't even want to play the side of music, bro. I don't even think it's worth it. But do you have any hot takes on this, Arthur? What what, what are your opinions? All right. So listen, my apologies first for being a little bit silent on that one, but I want you to get that out of the way because, all right, this is legit insane. First, it's already bad enough. That Xbox don't even got that many games. Because you've already heard it, ladies and gentlemen, on this podcast. How me and AJ, mostly AJ at this point now, just rags on Xbox. Because they make it too easy at at this point. But now for the fact that they're increasing the price on Xbox Live. And it's not like like a thing where they're going to improve the service or anything like that. You're just paying more for essentially the same thing. Yeah. So you got so many angry people on Twitter... That are just like so outraged at this, and you know what's the worst thing that um you pointed you pointed it out to me was the fact that what on their website they don't even have a price listing for the twelve months yet. It's only three and six months, which is confirmed, right? Which three months is thirty and six yeah. months oh, is I'll, sixty. Correction, I wasn't on the uh, the Microsoft website. I was actually uh, looking at a couple articles oh, uh, okay. who, that had the price listings written down. And it mm-hmm. said NA on a few articles for, for the 12 months I'm, I'm referring to. So we're we're thinking, right? So then that means, so according to these prices, that means that 12 months is going to be around either 90 or or $100. Yeah, either that or they might just be discontinuing the 12 months altogether. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. And too. at that point, that's just going to be even worse for the consumer because now they're spending double what they spent for a year. Yep. Because it's now $10 a month. That's insane. Not even PlayStation has that right now. And they were like on the same boat as Microsoft. So, listen. Uh, it's a running gag on this channel and yeah. on this podcast. But Xbox, why? Like, like I was saying prior, it's like we can't even play the sad music for this one. Because we, we literally did that for them. Should we play the sad music? I don't know, bro. We if we're gonna play sad music, we need to play like tragic. Like we need super sad music. Because <laughs> this like, is not like, even sad at this point. This is just depressing. Like, this is it. Really is. 
and this is coming from two people that literally were playing on Xbox for the longest time. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, um, I can't even really, like, it's like, yo, it's like they're not really adding any type of value. I, I would understand, I could understand this, this price jump if they were incorporating Game Pass into gold and you're not, and you're basically getting rid of the Game Pass subscription. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I could, I could then sort of justify that, but it's kind of just like, Game Pass is still its own kind of thing, you know what I mean? So exactly, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Microsoft, uh, do do better, do better, do better, please, for uh, the sake of yeah. everyone. Yeah, that was the that was the stuck unloading. That was the uh, I guess that's that's it for that. Yeah. Um, now moving on from one company to the next. Yeah, we're gonna finally transition into our actual topics for for today, mm-hmm. and we're gonna be starting with Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. CD Projekt Red has officially dropped a video. Essentially apologizing for the state that the game was released in. Uh, before I continue, AJ, have you seen the video? Pardon me, I was getting a swig of water. Yes, I have seen the video. All right, just to, just to, like you know, just to make sure. But um, they, you know how it is with like these company driven videos, like for apologies, like oh, we didn't release it at the expectation that you had from us. They mentioned something about how they were initially just working on the PC port, right? And the PC version went, went like, they're, that's the version that they're proud of. And they try to, like, put that version onto consoles. And there was a lot of problems with that. And yeah. they are devoting themselves to fixing it with patch after patch so that it can be the experience that they wanted to give us from the start. Yeah. That, so, that was basically their apology. Uh, yeah. So... I know that there was a lot of stuff that they couldn't really, or not they, but I, I believe it was the vice president speaking that he couldn't really say because uh, I feel like this entire video was kind of him illegally stepping on eggshells, you know what I mean? Like he's basically, uh, this is basically an apology where he's not really taking any sort of, I mean, f- for him putting putting himself out there and just putting himself out there and taking the brunt of like all that, that, that controversy is, is basically... Uh, it's basically a, this whole other thing, but basically it's like a. I can't even really beat around the bush. I, if I gotta, if I gotta really just just say it straight up, it's like, stop capping, <laughs> stop capping, bro. Yeah. Stop the cap. You know what I mean? Like he was basically walking on eggshells, walking around a whole bunch of legalities that he couldn't really say that they were directly at fault. It kind of just sounds like excuses to me, if I'm being completely honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, really, really, all I could really, uh, sum this down is to, to be is, you know what I mean? It's, it's a, the game was coming up. It was holiday season. The game clearly wasn't finished. You could say that from either a buggy perspective or a game design pers- perspective. The game was clearly undercooked, half the big, if, if, if I may, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, with a whole bunch of, not even just aside from the bug, just a whole bunch of, core game mechanics just being uh underdeveloped a lot of stuff being cut out from the game it's just mm-hmm. it's just uh it's just wrong to be honest with you to then just release a a product like this you know what i mean and on top of that i'm not even sure if you're aware of this arthur but uh you know they didn't send out review copies for the uh for the last gen right yeah yes, they, they didn't send review copies they didn't let people use footage, their footage. They, they could only use pre-approved footage for their mm-hmm. reviews, et cetera, et cetera. The reason why they did this, and, and pay attention, people, is because they knew what it was before they released the game. They knew the game ran like shit. Mm-hmm. And they didn't and- care. They released it for the incentive of money, one, and just the fact that people have been waiting on this game for a very long time, you know what I mean? It's uh, mm-hmm. it's sad to say, and it's like you know that's what he was really feeling, but he couldn't say it because well, one, they're already getting sued. <laughs> yeah, and uh, much. <laughs> yeah, it was really just add him saying all that shit would basically just be putting fucking kerosene over a fucking open grill, you know what I mean? Just lighting that bitch up, but uh, it's really it's really just just uh, you know what I mean? Just deception deception mm-hmm. and uh you know what i mean lies and and to be honest i didn't even expect i wasn't even expecting that much from this game and it's just like damn bro he's just no, damn. I, I, I know some people were but not me the thing that i think kind of gets to me is because i think at one point in the video he says something about how when they were testing the game themselves they didn't they didn't see 
a lot of the issues that we were experiencing. Yeah, that's what that's what I said before. Stop capping. Stop. They knew what the fuck it was, bro. You knew they they knew what it was. Either, either that's the game that we didn't get. Like they're playing something completely different, or he's just straight up fucking capping. Which I'm, I have a feeling it is bullshit, bro. It's 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 some bullshit. That apology was some bullshit, bro. The thing. The I, thing that I feel bad for... Sorry for interrupting. No, no, continue. Like I no, just no, want to get real. this off my chest. No, get, get it off for sure. I've, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> you go yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that I just feel bad for mostly are not the not the people that are responsible for um, releasing this in the state that it's in. More so the developers that had to literally put so many hours, so much crunch time for this game to already be, like, you know, out. Because, like... They're trying to make something very ambitious, right? With like having like this huge open world city, like so vibrant, so lively, um, all without loading whatsoever. So the developers who had no control of whether that game was going to be released or not, I feel bad for them the most in all honesty. Because like they didn't they didn't choose when that game was going to be released. In fact, probably some of them may have known that, oh, we're not going to get this to the to the level that we want before... Um, they want to release the game just to meet like you mentioned um, the holidays were coming around next gen consoles were around so they were probably getting bugged and peer pressured by like you know, investors you know, the higher ups, yeah investors, higher ups. stockholders you know the works it, it, it just sucks for them yeah but mm-hmm. at it, the, the end game of the day, shouldn't have been yeah yeah go ahead go ahead at the end of the day you fold it <laughs> you didn't yeah. you didn't stand true to your own fucking morals and codes of values you, you folded for some money mm-hmm. at the end of the day and this is why i'll be telling people yo bro don't don't be trusting these companies bro these people don't care about you yeah they really don't. maybe they maybe the individuals like I, I like i feel like the the actual vp felt sorry you know what i mean i'm sure a lot of the devs felt sorry like genuinely and i mean it's genuinely but the companies don't give a shit about that they they only care about one thing my guy they want to return they want moolah yeah they want that money going in they want them stockholders to be good so they can invest more into them yep and you got your money but my question to you is was it worth it (laughs) was it really (laughs) worth it look what it did to your reputation i mean you could find you can find cyberpunk for literally 30 bucks right now the game's been out for like a little over a month yep i was literally speaking to aj and i don't know if this is true but isn't this one of the in, in recent time there's probably more that have done this but this is probably has to be one of the the quickest price drops for a triple a um title in a while to go down to like the prices that we're seeing like what i i saw the playstation 4 version for 30 dollars at this point um playstation 5 version 35 36 pc yeah. is pc so you know they're fine if you got the if you got the pc hardware then you're fine but you still got problems over there. Yeah, they're down bad everywhere, bro. Don't, really it don't it don't matter what platform you're playing on. You might be having a slightly better experience than others. But uh, yeah, did you not only that? Did you actually hear the fact that uh, over eighty percent of the player base has stopped playing on Steam for Cyberpunk? Yep. Mm-hmm. No, actually, I haven't heard about over, that. Over, I mean, around eighty percent, I believe. Yeah, stop. They stopped playing the game. <sighs> it's just a shame, and you know, um. I don't know if we were discussing this in one of our earlier um, podcasts, but you were saying something about how I think, like, you were saying, like, don't believe the hype, right? Yeah. Something about that. And yeah. we're in 2020, uh, 2021, and Cyberpunk is now one of the biggest um, disappointments, probably, of this generation. Yeah, absolutely. To be honest with you, but yeah, that, that's a good story to follow, people. Anyway, moving on from beating a dead horse that is Cyberpunk 2077, we have a little bit of uh, good news with a Resident Evil showcase that just happened recently. They talked about uh, a lot of stuff regarding Resident Evil. Uh, we got some more news on Resident Evil 8. I believe it's going to be coming out in May, I believe, if I if I have that correctly. Yeah, May 7, 2021. And there's also a new multiplayer mode coming out for that game that will also be free for people who purchase Resident Evil 8. And it's essentially like this deathmatch style game mode where you get to play as any of the heroes and villains from uh, the Resident Evil series. That includes Leon Kennedy, Nemesis, Claire Redfield, Alan Wesker, Ada, Chris Redfield, you know. 
any major protagonist or antagonist that has shown up in the series is most likely going to be in this. Um, yeah. What uh, do you think about this? Before how, we how even get into that, I feel like we got to we got to uh, analyze these separately because okay. I feel like uh, they showed a lot of RE8, and I wanted to get into that first. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, no one problem. from a story standpoint, I believe uh, I believe uh, Chris Redfield is back in there. I've seen a lot of uh, speculation go on that uh, there's a chance that Jill might be coming back as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think that what they showed looks really cool. If you're a horror buff, unfortunately, I'm not really into horror games. But uh, from from a from a visual perspective, the game looks great. Uh, the game, I mean, the demo, I should say, which is out now on a uh, PS5 and I I think PS4. Don't quote me on that. But uh, mm-hmm. the, the demo runs smooth. I believe it's like 4K 60 on on the PS5 and and it, and it uh, it's pretty dope and and whatnot. But uh, yeah, from from what they showed visually, uh, it looks it looks really really good. I was not expecting expecting i don't know what i was expecting to be honest with you but yeah that that pretty much met my expectations for what a resident evil a current resident evil game looks like following in the steps of uh, re7 you know what i mean Mm-hmm. i uh, got you yeah i can't really say much on it besides it looks like an updated re7 uh in a new setting uh, i don't know why for some reason that that house that they showed in the in the showcase that mm-hmm. just that opening shot kind of reminded me of another RE game. I'm not sure. I think it was RE two or three. I'm not sure. It, it takes place in like a mansion. I'm not really sure which one. Oh, it is. then you're talking about the first one. RE one. It might have been RE one. Yep, RE one. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. It, besides that, not really not much I can say. The character designs look really cool. The antagonist, I believe, which is supposed to be like this this really tall woman, uh, really pale woman. It looks like something straight out of the fucking 1900s or even 1800s at this point. Yeah, interesting character design. And the one thing I thought that was really cool, if if, uh, this is kind of spoilery for the demo, if you when you get to the end, she actually she's like some type of Edward Scissorhand type of fucking opponent. Like she just picks you up and then she just like brings out these giant like three foot claws out of her hands and just stabs you. I mean, it was really cool. Uh, the the most appalling thing to me, to be honest with you, that kind of shocked me. Was that a fucking uh, bug lady? I don't, I don't know if you, you saw the showcase, but uh, there's this fucking bug lady that reminds me of the dude from Naruto. The, uh, I'm drawing. I'm, no, no, I'm drawing a blank right now. But uh, but basically, what what she did in the showcase was, I think one of the bugs flew in his mouth or something, and then it just came up through his arm and it just popped out of his hand. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, but oh, besides man. that, from a fucking character perspective, I think it looks cool. There's ghouls. Uh, there's vampires. I believe there's like werewolves and other types of shit. I don't even think they didn't even show a single zombie, so I don't even know what the fuck this is gonna be. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, the enemies have swords. You can guard and all types of shit. Besides that, yeah. What do you think about this, Arthur? I mean, I think it's cool. Yeah, I, I'm more towards what you said, where this really looks like um, an extension of Resident Evil Seven, which. Um, when it was released, it was essentially like a, a reboot for the series at that point. Mm-hmm. It, is a, it is a sequel, a follow-up. Yeah, it is a sequel. You're still playing as uh, Ethan, I believe is his name. Uh, me, personally, I haven't still beaten or even played Resident Evil 7, mostly because um, I am just not a big horror kind of guy. I say that, and then I've played and beaten both Resident Evil... Wait. One, but <laughs> two, four, and five. Yeah, I was only gonna say that. Didn't you just didn't you just tell me before the recording that fucking RE four was one of your <laughs> yeah. favorite games? All right, well, yes, but well, not, but to be fair, fan? okay. All right, let, let me let me just clear this right up. All right, so I like horror in the sense that you can fight back, and there's more action than horror, or better yet, action that is supplemented with like horror. I don't like horror that is like the main focus like i hate survival horror with a passion so right. stuff like amnesia um there's one called soma that i just don't like because you just can't fight back you just have to run mm-hmm. and while resident evil 7 is has like action and stuff like that i just personally haven't gone around to it how yet, do you feel so. about the the guard feature the guard feature is cool yeah because there is a and an, if like it's almost like a perfect parry kind of thing where it's like if you guard at the correct time you can uh, actually snuff one of the fucking ghouls or whatnot. I can't even call them zombies. They're not zombies. 
mm-hmm. but you can basically you can basically fight back. Uh, you do have limited resources, but you can you can protect yourself, even if you don't have any ammo. So how do you how do you feel about that? I mean, I think that's definitely it's good for the combat in the game. Mm-hmm. It gives you more opportunities to actually defend yourself, which is always a pl- always a plus, especially in these types of games where you make one one wrong decision. Or if you don't take care of your resources, you're going to just die immediately. Like, that was, that's basically what it was in 7. And they're going to continue that in 8. But at least they're going to give, like, the player more options into um, defending themselves. Of course, I'm assuming that's going to be limited with some of the other enemies. Like, you can't do that with, like, bosses. Um, maybe certain enemies you just can't parry because they have unblockable attacks. But yeah, we'll see more of that when the game actually releases. So, so does this make you a little more interested in trying to get back into Resident Evil, or you, does this make you want to try out RE Seven a little? It does. I'm not gonna lie, because I, I always did want to try Seven, but uh, you see, the inner pussy in me is telling me no, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, eh, it's still Resident Evil. I love the series still, even though Resident Evil Seven was like the one that I just didn't play. But no, like fair, fair enough. Uh, I'll definitely try it out again. One thing, one thing about this RE verse. One thing I'll say real quick it is basically, it essentially just looks like a Fortnite ripoff, but with RE characters. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like the cel shadedness, but besides that, from a gameplay perspective, it doesn't really look all that interesting. But uh, hey. Yeah, I mean, just, it probably is just something that they just added to be like, oh, you can play as anyone you want and just kill people. Because, you know, that's why people play Resident Evil, right? Yeah, I, I be- also believe that's because of the uh, it's the 25th anniversary or something like that for Resident Evil this year. Oh, actually, yeah. It's, yes, you're right. Yeah, I, I think I think that might have been something that uh, had to do with it. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much oh, all so I can you say. Know, this is just something that I know is, like, is going to get you. Talk to me. So, you know, um, you know, this year is also the anniversary for? Uh, What's up? Sonic. All right, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Uh, moving on, moving on. All right. Uh, Apex Legends Season 8. Mm-hmm. New trailer just dropped. I don't think they showed any gameplay yet, so I can't really speak on it too much. But uh, they showed off a hero. It was giving me kind of telltale-ish, maybe maybe some Borderlands vibes mm-hmm. just off of his appearance. Uh, Arthur, what do you what do you think about this this uh, cinematic trailer? I guess they dropped. I don't really care that much. But what do you think about um, it? I'm not. I'm kind of like like I don't really care too much, uh, especially since we haven't played Apex Legends in a good minute. I think the last time we played was when season two dropped. Yeah, and that's when they released the uh, that what I, I don't even know what she is. The chick with the with the electricity, essentially. Yeah, that was super long ago, man. Might have been mm-hmm. 20, 20, 2019? Yeah, I think so. 2019, I think um, so, yeah. I mean, I think it's cool also that it's kind of not like a flashback scene. It's more like something that's currently happening on the map, which is what a lot of the cinematics, I guess, go for. I don't know. I haven't kept kept track with um, their uh, seasonal things. Same. It's, it's but, cool or whatever. Yeah, but, it's yeah. definitely cool. Um, maybe it'll get me back into Apex for a little bit just to mm-hmm. see what's happening with the game. I, I've seen that. I don't know if you've seen it, but they're... The map that they had before where it was like super bright. I think it was like on this floating island kind of thing. It looked absolutely gorgeous whenever I've seen um, gameplay from Apex Legends recently. And I have not seen it. Dude, it, it looks so pretty. No, it's the, the so one thing bright, that might get me back into it. Uh, maybe I'll take a look at that some other time. But maybe one thing that might get me back into it is that there are some rumors going on. Uh, heavy rumors that... Uh, that I guess respawn has kind of flamed themselves. They, they're kind of because they did talk about uh, what I'm about to talk about, but they also mentioned the Switch version will be coming to Apex, hopefully pretty pretty soon, as early as uh, when is the next season start? Sometime in February. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they if they put that thing on Switch, man, who knows? Who knows? I might I might end up getting back into it. Yeah. Now the only thing they need is crossplay. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. They, they don't have crossplay. You're, you're right. I don't. At least I don't think they do. I haven't. I haven't been keeping up with it. I don't think they do either. I mean, yeah. I want crossplay. Like, I mean, what? What? 
I was going to say what Battle Royale at this point doesn't have crossplay, and I'm trying to think of one that doesn't. I think Hyperscape doesn't have crossplay, but that's that's a that's another discussion for another time. Yeah, pretty much. Uh is there anything else we got to talk about? Um in for gaming, I think that's it. Hmm, okay. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up that. Is there anything else you want to get to before we uh we we go ahead and, uh, wrap this one up or you want, you want to talk about Sonic's 30th anniversary? No, no. I, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I mean, the only thing that I naturally would talk about is the fact that Persona Persona Five Strikers is getting released here next month, which I'm hyped for. All right, fuck it, fine. You want to talk oh, about yeah. Sonic 30th anniversary? Let's let's go. All right, so this so this is what's gonna happen, right? Listen, I'm gonna predict the future. I'm gonna predict the future live on podcast. All right, are you ready right. for this? All right, you're good at this, so let me hear this. Sega, what Sega's gonna do is Sega's actually gonna announce some type of Sonic collection. And mm-hmm. then on top of that, they're also going to announce a new Sonic game, and it's going to come out, and it's going to be fucking trash. <laughs> there you go. That's, no, that's my prediction. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> we'll see. All right. We're going to keep that Um, we're gonna keep that pinned until it gets released. Yeah. All right. Moving on. <laughs> I think that's enough for gaming that we have <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, I guess there is kind of one more thing we could talk about. We just just really, really quick. I don't, I don't feel like it's going to be a very long discussion. But mm-hmm. uh, there's been this one thing that's been going on, trending on Twitter for a while. And it kind of got me thinking, right? Uh, so this is trending under the anime section. And people were saying that one fight that they really wanted to see in the original Naruto series was Nar- was Neji versus Sasuke. Mm-hmm. So we kind of had a little bit of a discussion off, off of recording and we, we kind of just decided to save it for the pod. And we're going to uh, just talk about it for a second. So who, who do you think would win in a right. fight? Naruto part, this is part one, by the way. This is this is pre-Shippuden. Mm-hmm. Let, let's, just, let's just set that up right now. And uh, let's just say, who do you think is going to win? Offer. Um, Who are you going with? All right. Well, I say if it's before Sasuke had the curse mark, Neji wins hands down. If it's after Sasuke had the curse mark, like we're talking about around like the end of Naruto, then Sasuke wins no doubt. Hmm. That's my take on it because yeah, we got to we got to do I a timeline. This. Yes, we have to do a timeline because. During the show, both Naruto and Sasuke had like different points in power. Yeah. So. All right. Let's just say. Let's just let's just put it let's just put it like this, right? They're on mm-hmm. the tuning exams stage, and hypothetically Chunin. speaking, instead okay. of Naruto getting the fight, Neji, it's Sasuke. Hmm. Pre co. I mean, no, no. Post co- curse mark. You you you're going with Sasuke. If we're talking about that one, yeah, because I'm talking about like end of Naruto curse mark when this motherfucker had wings coming out of him at this point. Oh lord! Uh, but if we're oh, talking okay. about that one where the, like this man just finally donned his like black um, clothing, I'm trying to like be that. fair to Neji, because the reason is because it's like Sasuke just gets so much stronger after the tuning exam. So I'm just trying to be fair to Neji, man. I'm just trying to make it. Oh no, I get you. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty sort of equal. You know, I want to say it would be equal. Because at that point, Sasuke has Chidori. He can only do it twice, though. And maybe if he uses the curse mark, he can do it one more time. Aside from that, I mean, I think Neji has a good advantage. Because I think at that point, his Byakugan may have been stronger than Sasuke Sharingan at the time. Um, This is why I say, like... If we're talking about Sasuke at the end of Naruto, the yeah, Neji stands no chance. But if we're talking before that, I think it's either equal or on Neji's favor a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, both of them are like super fucking strong and like the strongest in their class at the time. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's a toss up honestly. Because here's the thing, uh, Sasuke has a strong gun, so I guess you can you can you can kind of tell what Neji's about to do before he really does it. But if you also think about this, if Neji can actually get his chakra points off. Sasuke would be kind of screwed then because he's not like Naruto in, in the terms of like he can basically jar on reserve chakra. Exactly. And that's and, essentially uh, why he won. Yeah. And you need chakra to use the Sharingan. You can't use it with no chakra. Mm-hmm. 
So it's it's honestly a toss up. It's honestly a toss up. But uh, hell, if I'm if I'm going with what I got right now, I'm saying if if, if Neji gets if Neji gets the trigrams off, <laughs> the, you know, the sixty four palms, then then yeah, Neji the Neji got it. Mm hmm. But Sasuke's nice, though. I don't know if Sasuke's getting caught like Naruto got caught, bro. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, Sasuke's nice. more perceptive. Plus, he has the Sharingan, which lets... Well, like, one of his main abilities is the fact that he's able to essentially see what the person's going to do before mm-hmm. and, like, dodge it appropriately. Did he have Chidori during the shooting exams? I think he did. He did in the third part. Like, I'm talking know, about the finals. Yeah, the finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he had Chidori. He just learned it. Okay. And according yeah. to Kakashi, he can only do it twice. Yeah. All right. If that's the case, I'm, I'm going with Sasuke. <laughs> Sasuke got it. Still going with Sasuke? Yeah. Uh, I think I think Neji. I think Neji got it. Only because only because of that trigram rotation shit. I don't know how powerful a Chidori can go through that. Mm-hmm. If it's going to be going all around him. Fair but, yo, it, it would probably be a good fight. All right. Well, I, I feel like that's pretty much all we can go with this discussion. If you're listening to the video version, make sure you comment down below. Who do you think would win in a fight between Neji versus Sasuke? But, yeah, besides that. Yeah, part one. We're talking tuning exams finals. Uh, but besides that, I think that's all we got to talk about. That's all on my show notes. So, uh, I feel like we should go ahead and do the wrap-up. All right. Then let's go do the wrap-up. All right. Well, guys, if you're listening to this podcast, make sure you're aware that you can check us out on any other platform, an audio platform that is a Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Apple Podcast, and much, much more. We're on over 10 different platforms. On top of that, we have a video version on my YouTube channel at Aaron Ryder. Aaron Ryder, pardon me, wink, wink. That is A-R-A-N-R-Y-D-E-R. You should definitely go check that out. We got a bunch of other content over there as well. Uh, make sure if you guys enjoy the podcast, you go ahead and rate us five stars on iTunes because we greatly appreciate that and it helps us get out to more people. Uh, if you guys would like to, you, you don't have to, but if you guys would like to, you could also uh, go over to our page at anchor.fm slash the loading podcast and you can support us if you choose to do so. You can now pledge any amount you want to. It could be as little as one dollar or however much you want so if, if you really enjoy the content and you want to throw us a couple bucks we would appreciate that also if you have any questions for us you can go ahead and leave a voicemail message on our site once again that is anchor.fm slash the loading podcast you can leave us a message and who knows maybe we'll, we'll answer it on stream for sure so uh mm-hmm. but yeah uh besides that uh you can find our socials at you can find me at aaron Ryder everywhere that is uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, no Facebook because I don't like Facebook. Uh, you can find my guy over here at. You can find me under Flying Rye on Instagram and Twitter, and also on Twitch, where you can catch me streaming some Dark Souls, Smash Bros, or League of Legends, depending on what I'm feeling for the day. And yeah, check it out. We have a good time. We have a nice little community that I'm starting to grow. And yeah, hope to see you over there. Well, you heard the men. Go do all that. And once again, we're gonna be signing off now. So. My name is AJ. And my name is Arthur. And this has been the Loading Podcast, episode 44. We'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.